Hi, everyone. So as thank you for that introduction, Maya. Um, my name is Ella Barton. I'm from Massachusetts, but I'm currently working in the JAM lab at Washington University School of Medicine. And my research project, it has been focusing on the automation of single cell nuclei isolation using Singulator. So at this point, you may be wondering, what is single cell nuclei isolation? So this is the process of taking a section of tissue, suspending it in an OCT block, and sectioning it using a cryostat machine. Then it is physically and chemically broken down until only the single cell nuclei of the tissue cells remain intact. The goal of nuclei isolation is to use the isolated nuclei for single nuclei RNA sequencing, in, uh, which then can be used for profiling gene expression in cells which are difficult to isolate. In order for a sample to be viable, there must be a high nuclei count, little to no clumping or debris when visualized, as well as a high RNA integrity number and DV200, which evaluates the percentage of RNA fragments that are larger than 200 nucleus times. After having some background information on nuclei isolation, the next step is to understand how nuclei isolation is done currently. There are three different ways to prep tissue for nuclei isolation as seen in this figure that is actually from a previous article that my research lab presented. Um, there, the three ways are frozen in OCT, cryo sections, enzymatic dissociation, and whole frozen tissue sections. So the past research paper that this figure was used in was published in 2019, and it's called a single nucleus RNA sequencing pipeline to decipher the molecular anatomy and pathophysiology of human kidneys. Pretty much set up a baseline for this whole process of tissue dissociation and processing for nuclei isolation. Um, so within this article, um, it was found that kidney tissue sections frozen in OCT was the best tissue preparation method that resulted in the fewest amount of artifacts. And although the preferred tissue prepar preparation methods have been discovered, the nucleate isolation process is still being done by hand, resulting in high rates of human error and taking hours at a time, significantly limiting the amount of samples that can be run in a day. This gap in knowledge of how to make nucleate isolation more efficient is where I come in. Um, in 2020, S2 Genomics released a machine called the Singulator 100, which uses a single-use cartridge bench top system to automate tissue dissociation. Running the Singulator only takes about 8 to 12 minutes per sample, whereas the manual protocol, protocol takes about 2 to 3 hours. It has been successful in nuclear isolation of large tissue samples of many different tissue types, but has never been used on the kidney, let alone, let alone small kidney tissue samples. So as a result, my goal is to develop an ideal protocol for single cell nuclei isolation of small kidney samples. This is pretty difficult because our goal is to use um, biopsy sized tissue samples, which are very small. And as this singulator machine has only been used on large samples, um, we have been encountering some easily moments where the samples have been easily damaged. Um, However, if I can develop a protocol that produces results viable enough for single nuclei RNA sequencing, this automation will drastically improve the efficiency and reproducibility of nuclei isolation. Due to the time limitation of this program, I have mainly been testing variations in incubation times of 0, 4, and 6 minutes within two different protocols. One kid currently used on large samples of neuron tissue and one developed for larger kidney samples that has not been properly tested for RNA sequencing yet. So these two protocols are listed on the slides here. And both protocols use the company's reagents, a cold incubation temperature, and a fast mixing speed, but differ on the use of auto mincing, mixing type, disruption type, and disruption speed. Both protocols were tested several times at the different incubation times of zero, four, and six minutes as these different incubation times seem to have drastically different effects on nuclei count. So after running these different protocols through the singulator, one way I analyzed the results was looking at the quality of nuclei visualization. Looking specifically at the neuron protocol, I found that the six minute incubation time had the highest nuclei count, but there were some significant rates of debris and clustering. Over here on the left is the is an image of a sample run the six minute incubation time under the neuron protocol. And it had pretty good results, 
re reduce, resulting in 4,200 gigabyte per megalitre or a 210,000 total yield. But you, as you can see with the arrows, um, there was some debris and clumping. Most of the nuclei should look like very circular and there's just a little bit of variability, but there's a lot of nuclei present. Whereas um, over here on the right is a zero minute incubation time under neuron protocol with uh, 2,550 nuclei per microliter or 127,500 total yield, which is a little bit lower. But if you look at the nuclei themselves in blue, they're much more circular. There's a little bit of minor clumping, but you can still see the individualized, individualized nuclei in these clumps. So there's more uniformity and they're well-shaped. So from these experiments, I was able to conclude that on average, the neuron protocol seemed to have the best results with a higher average nuclei count per incubation time and a smaller standard deviation, meaning there seemed to be less variability in the neuron protocol compared to the Kippy protocol. You can see these results in this figure over here where the standard error bars represent standard deviation and there just seems to be higher nuclei counts in the neuron protocol. Looking at these R studio graphs, you can see that the neuron protocol has, a, has higher peak ratings at zero and six minute incubation times when compared to the kidney protocol experiments. In this case, the higher debris rating, the higher debris rating, the lower the amount of debris present in nuclei vision, visualization, so a higher rating is better. Um, although there are some ratings in this protocol that are lower than the kidney experiments, mixed with the higher nuclei yield, it equates to a better nuclear isolation protocol. We expected the four minute incubation time to have the best results as it represented the middle ground between the zero minute incubation time and the six minute incubation time. However, as you can see in the graphs, um, the four minute incubation time surprisingly had worse results resulting in lower nuclear counts and higher rates of degrees. Um, after sending two samples run using the neuron protocol at zero and six minute incubation times to temic genomics for RNA sequencing, the quality of our cDNA yields were unfortunately not high enough for a single nuclei RNA sequencing. As this machine is normally used on larger tissue samples, as we stated in the beginning, um, this may have been due to the lysis buffer reagent within the company's nuclear isolation kit being too strong for such a small kidney tissue sample. So in order to combat this, I am now currently testing all three incubation times again, but using the NEB and PBSD buffer solutions that are used in manual protocol instead of the company's reagents. Once we find a protocol using these new reagents that seems to be of high quality, we will send them to 10X Genomics again and see if they qualify for single nuclear RNA sequencing. Although this was a bit of a step back in my project, so far I have been getting pretty good results using these new reagents, and particularly at the four minute incubation time, which we originally thought was going to work well. Um, I've been getting 500 total yield or 4,775 nuclei per microliter, which hopefully will be, hopefully will work much better than the previous protocols. So throughout, through the science, I definitely have dealt with some hardships in this project, um, through the science, but I've also learned a lot and have advanced my own skills intensely. <laughs> um, through scientific lens, I learned how to isolate nuclei and better understand the results I was getting. As this automation is new, I had to push myself to successfully decipher what constituted good versus bad simulator results and how to edit the protocol based on that. During this project, I have dealt with many moments of not meeting nuclear quality or RNA integrity standards. And I've had to learn how to bounce back quickly and adapt, even when other researchers around me also didn't know what to do next as this is a new, whole new project. Um, so one of the biggest moments was when my cDNA yields were not high enough for single nuclear RNA sequencing. But as my next steps have shown, I've bounced back pretty well and have made significant results. So because of these hardships, um, I've had to learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, but I've also been able to make great strides even after having some issues. And so this has been an incredible experience for me. And I want to thank everyone in the Jane lab and, and also Maya for helping coordinate all of this. And thank you for listening. <laughs>